empty the chain run. And how do you do that? Four six seconds, 28 point feet, everything you got. Everything you got. Turn that shit up. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Welcome to Buckeye Scoop Live. It is Tuesday. It is the game. It is, uh, the, this is as hyped and as crazy of an atmosphere as we've seen since 2006. There is a lot of vengeance on the mind of the Buckeyes. Uh, Michigan's talking tough. It's going to be an interesting ride. We have the two best analysts in the game in Bill Green and Nevada Buck coming on shortly. But uh, I can't wait to talk about this. We're going to take your questions. Any questions you have, load them up in the chat. We will take them, we will answer them, and we will do, uh, it's going to be a fun one. So I'm excited about it. Uh, we had a great pre-show, so can't even imagine what the real show is about to be like. So, But as always, we are thankful and grateful for you guys. If you enjoy this content, please click subscribe right down below. Huge hump for us. If you enjoy the stream, leave us a like. Likes are huge. Comment who needs to be the MVP of the game to beat the Michigan Wolverines on Saturday for the Buckeyes. What do we need to get done? We need to hear it. After this, we'll be on BuckeyeScoop.com all night. Uh, we are really cranking the content. This has been a fantastic week, huge recruiting weekend, a lot of big news. Um, super excited about this one. But without further ado, I have my two compadres, <laughs> two of the, the funniest guys, two of the best analysts in the game, Nevada Buck, Bank Green. How are you guys tonight? Good, man. Great. Real good. Great, great, All right, great I'm, week. I'm going to start with you, Nevada. Nevada, two big nuggets yesterday, uh, talking about Blake Corum, uh, big quarterback nugget. How are you feeling after the media availabilities have concluded on Tuesday? Um, anything new? Any new feelings? Or are you still uh, uh, all gas, no brakes on the Buckeyes uh, this Saturday? I, I am all gas, no brakes. I mean, you can already <laughs> see it. You can see the Michigan guys are already starting to kind of set up the excuses and try to do the old oh, golly jeepers work kind of that. And like with Ohio State, man, it's a firm resolve. They know what they had to do. Ryan, Ryan Day knows what's at stake on this game, too. Like, this is about his legacy. He, he, he's about his all, and the players all know. They've, they've been hearing the conversation. Like, the uh, all the comments, you know, and again, I'm, I'm not big. I, I just, man, I, don't, I generally don't think that stuff works, but I think that stuff has gotten so personal about the softness and kind of little code words about the culture at Michigan's better and stuff like that. And they've got this stuff running on a loop at the Woody Hayes Athletic Center right now. And the, the, the boys will be ready. The fans will be ready. And frankly, you know, the, in, in general, the better team generally wins the game. Um, we're the better team. They have not, they've been a very, very mediocre road team this year. We've been a very, very good home team. Um, I think for all those reasons, I think we're rolling big. And yeah, nothing that happened in the press availability has changed. It just it reinforced it for me uh, even more. I'm all in the, on the Buckeyes this Saturday. Bank, how are you feeling about the the game? Uh, a lot of craziness this week in the press availabilities, but uh, how are you feeling? Uh, you know, we're about what four days out at this point. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I guess you know I've been pretty down on Michigan all year, I, I, and they, they, you know, they do keep winning. But I think the Big Ten is really bad. Um, so, you know, I mean, both teams are undefeated, but I sure don't see, like, the 2006 – I don't see that at all. I don't see this, this, this type of matchup. I mean, you know, we've been over this stuff before. We had Phil Steele at the start of the season, if you remember that. And yeah. I had talked to Phil about, you know, when I kind of evaluate teams, either for games or for or the whole season – you know, I look at head coach, quarterback, defense, O-line, and then your intangibles, you know, but where, you know, I think, I think head coach is, is, is a wash and defenses are both about the same and O-lines are both about the same, but quarterback is just, it's not even close, you know, and that's, to, you know, it's the single most important position in all of team sports is a quarterback. I don't care, baseball, basketball, whatever you want to talk, quarterback, number one. And then when you drop down to the intangibles, I mean, Ohio State's at home, and that's a huge advantage. They've had their nose rubbed in it for 365 days. They heard the talk about softness. And, Kirk, you were a player. Uh, <laughs> nothing hurts worse than being called soft and oh, have it being true. Have it being true, and it was true. There's no way around it. They were soft last year. You know, they were they were the typical Northern lamb. Well, I think this team is national good. And I think Michigan, again, is Big Ten good. 
which Big Ten good gets you in the playoffs and it gets you killed. But national good, you line up and you beat Clemson. You line up and, you know, you play people. So, and I think that's what Ohio State is. I think Ohio State is a national good team. And I think Michigan is a Big Ten good team. And I just think the advantage of quarterback, the home team, they're getting your nose rubbed in it. I think Ohio State wins. And and I, you know, I, I guess it should be close, but I just don't think it's going to be close. Yeah, I... I'm right there with you. I don't see the star power of 06. Uh, I was talking to with Nevada today. I was like, you know, in 06, like they had Chad Henney, played 15 years in the NFL. He didn't start right. a lot of games, but he, you know, they had Lamar Woodley, who was Steeler, Pro Bowler, superstar uh, defensive end. Yeah. Allen Branch was about 6'6, 350 yep. at nose guard. He's a monster. monster. Yeah. Yeah. D- David Harris was a, you know, 12, uh, 13 year NFL guy, captain of the Jets. Leon Hall, first round pick corner. You know, I mean, so it was, I mean, they had some, yeah. Sean Grable was a a heck of a college football player. Yeah. Yeah. And he, he, I think he broke the record for tackles for a loss for Michigan his senior year. Uh, Jake Long went number one overall in the draft. Wow. You're right. Yeah. So Manningham, I think Manningham is one of the most underrated players ever. I mean, he was, Um, was yeah, I would have killed for him to go to Ohio because I thought he was that good. He was one of those guys. I was like, holy cow, is this kid? He, he's the most ice water kid I ever saw in high school in terms of what he did to Maslin. And he, I think he's like a sophomore yeah. that year when he crushed Maslin. I was like, Oh my God, I was there. I was at yeah. that game. Yeah. You're probably like, who the hell is this kid? And you know, is, no he, one is he gonna... who he was. yeah. And he was, he was a, he was a different animal, but I, uh, I don't know. Like, I, I think that you're right. Like when you want to put a, you know, when you want to put a bet down, it's like, who has the better quarterback? And it's like, you've got an a plus quarterback versus a uh, C C minus right. quarterback. Okay. Yeah. He, He's okay. Exactly. He's all right. He's okay. But it's like, you see a guy that's a, a, you know, and again, he's, you know, CJ is being talked about as being a top three pick. So, I mean, that's a pretty big edge in my, in my opinion. Yes. And, and I think Jim Knowles just schematically and, and, and schemes one thing, but culturally that, that, you know, he is like, he's a tough dude. And, and he is a guy that, man, he, he holds no quarter. That dude if you're not ready to give effort and play hard, he will throw. He, I mean, you'll be watching. You'll be standing next to Larry Johnson and and the guys on the sideline because you know he did that to Josh Proctor. I did it to Denzel Burke. I mean, he'll he'll hook you if you're not ready to go. He's not going to say, "Oh, well, you know, pat you on the head and say, 'I'll get him next drive.'" He's not, you're going to be watching the rest of the game. So I think that you know his toughness is rubbed off, and I think that you know when your two captains are Cade Stover and Tommy Eichenberg, those are two of the toughest guys in the history of the program. So I think that that resonates as to you know the mindset of the team and and honestly i think that the team walked into a fist fight last year i mean there were guys that admitted that in interviews Abeka abuka basically said oh we thought it would be easy because you know we beat him so many times and i was like you know and again like when you've won 18 out of 20 or whatever and, and then it's is to roll the helmets out and let's go and and they walked into aiden hutchinson and a team that was motivated but uh uh bank Big recruiting weekend. We were talking offline about some of the the ghosts of Samson Oak and Loa, and some of these guys <laughs> that could show up. Uh, I I I know that there is less than zero chance of us getting Samson Oak and Loa, but anything else you're hearing about this weekend? There's a big laundry list of names, uh, but but anything um, in terms of splashes, uh, last minute visits uh, that you could see showing up this weekend? You know, I, I, I I'm to the point where. You know, I, I just will say I don't know, you know, but man, that Caleb, the Caleb Downs vibe is definitely out there. I know his dad said they're going to the Iron Bowl, but for some reason, there are people connected to the Ohio State side of things. They're not saying he's coming, and I don't want to say that, but they're not saying he's that he's not coming. Okay, so, and that's got my interest, you know, Um People that are usually pretty spot on, pretty on the money and don't bull crap and bull crap hype stuff are telling me just just hang in there. Hang in there with Caleb Downs. We're not saying he's coming, but just keep your eye open. And that would be the eye opener. Caleb Downs, would, he's such an amazing player. He's Von Bell. Um, love the kid, his film, the type of person he is. I mean, you want that guy in your program. And then back to Samson Oak and Lola, you know, he's told people he's coming. So, you know, he would be the, when people talk about like NIL guys, he's an NIL guy. Okay. Trust me on that. 
And, and that doesn't mean Ohio State can't get him because Carnell Tate, Brandon Ennis, you know, all the SFE guys are, in a, are NIL guys, believe me. And Ohio State landed Tate and Ennis. So I'm not saying it can't be done. I'm just saying Oak and Lola is, is an NIL guy. Yeah. Nevada, are, are you surprised uh, that we haven't been able to pull – a five-star tackle just because I mean, we're losing Paris and Dewan. They're both going to go pro two wide open spots on the depth chart. I mean, if I'm Samson, I don't know where I'd rather go than Ohio state because you could literally start from day one because you know, you, you got Josh Fryer and then you've got, you know, maybe Donnie Zen. Jackson goes out the left tackle. Yeah. You got Zen, yeah. but in terms of yeah. an, an appetizing depth chart, that's about as good as it gets Nevada. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I think Bank hit on it, though. It's like you know, when when you got a kid that's an NIL kid, I mean, you've got kids that are down in Florida that are getting, you know, I mean, we, get, we could go all over, but you know, kids that are getting four or $500,000 at one time already before they ever set foot on the uh, college campus. And that's you know, life-changing money. So at that point, you know, does it really matter if you go to Ohio State and they've got an appetizing depth chart or you, or you go somewhere else where the money's great, you can, you know, step in and play when you can. And you've already kind of taken the, the you know, the, the chances of eating the whole cadoodle on this thing because you've got money in the bank, you know, before you ever played down in college football. So, you know, I think NILs changed so many things. And, um, you know, I think, well, you know, it's comfort, it's relationships, it's step chart, it's you know, this, it's that, you know, for some kids, it's NIL. And I think, you know, when that happens, you know, that, and as we talked about with, with five-star tackles, and there's just not that many of them. How many are there? Six of them or five or eight or 12? And there's not that many of them. And, you know, so it's a, it's a really unique you know, set of kids. And frankly, I think a kid like Luke Montgomery should probably be a five-star anyway. So maybe we already landed our five-star tackle and he's already in our class. Uh, but since he's committed, that you know, he's not going to get that fifth star. No. Nah. Well, I mean, on three might give him a fifth star or, or 247, the Buckeye bump, the super Buckeye bump. But on three, they, they put two of our corners as the top, two of the top three in the country behind your boy Grimani, uh in front of Dijon Banks. So that was real interesting. Uh, they bumped, they gave them the super Buckeye bump. Did you, uh, <laughs> Bank, when, when you judge these coaches, because, you know, you've been in this game for 30 years, uh, you know, with Nevada. But when you, you know, judge these guys and their recruiting prowess and their ability, how much, you know, do you take into account the NIL, um, availability like if you're a position coach at, at the u or florida or AM or wherever where they have these robust nil programs versus schools that might not be quite as aggressive or robust like how do you judge a guy in his recru recruiting ability because like a guy like brian hartline is just like he's like bulletproof to the whole yeah. thing like he, he you know he, he he goes in and he's like look i've put seven guys in the first round you'll make 50 million dollars with me or you can go make 600 grand at the u playing for five different coaches and you know, like, like how much do you judge it with the, the new world of NIL? How much does it change you? Oh, it's crazy. I mean, and you mentioned, <clears throat> you know, the best in the business and Brian Hartline. I mean, what do you think? I mean, number one, look at Carnell Tate. What do you think Tennessee would pay? And you don't have to give out numbers, but I mean, obviously Carnell would get an upfront NIL deal from Tennessee that would be out of this world. And have you watched Tennessee play? You know what I mean? That's a great offense. Yeah. You know what I mean? Those guys catch a lot of balls. So, and then you look at Brandon Ennis. And, you know, what do you think Miami would pay to get him? <clears throat> now, is that the most wide receiver friendly place in America? No, probably not. But, I mean, not everybody in the NFL is from Ohio State and Bama. So, you know, the, Heartline's the gold standard. You know, and maybe you have Heartline, you know, mentor these coaches, even though he's younger than most of them. <laughs> it can be done. It's being done. You know what I mean? That, I mean, that's all I can say. But NIL, it, it's absolutely a factor. I mean, I only know one guy that really wanted to come to Ohio State, but I think NIL forced him out, and that's Mark Fletcher. It happened a couple of weeks ago. And we've warned about this for how long, Kirk? You know, since the guy commit before he committed <laughs> You know, Terrence Brooks might have been an NIL loss. I don't know, but it hasn't been that many. Ohio State is still going to have a great class this year. They're off to a great start for next year. So, you know, they are they are surviving really well in this NIL world. Yeah, I you know, I agree. Dylan, I, you know, Dylan Rayola, I mean, oh, yeah. what would he 
you know, if he wants to go get money from someone, he's going to get a pile. And uh, you can say, well, his dad played in the NFL. They don't need money. Everybody needs money. LeBron James went to L.A. for financial reasons. His oper- yeah. And he's the richest guy in the NBA. So everybody yeah. everybody needs money. Nobody has enough. And But Ohio State is still getting Rayola because he wants to play it for Ryan Day in that offense. So you can still sell these kids. And there are, there are NIL opportunities at Ohio State. You know, sometimes we talk like these guys, you know, they have to go to McDonald's and count change. That's not the case. C.J. Stroud is doing very well. Trey Henderson, very well. A lot of the guys on this team are doing very well with NIL. Yeah. I, and, and I think we need to mention that sometimes because I think, you know, if, if recruits watch this program, they're thinking, oh, my God, you know, I'm going to have to eat day old fries at Ohio state where I can live like a King in A&M. The, the, the top players at Ohio state are doing very, very well. CJ Stroud does not have to call Uber when he wants to go downtown. He got a ride. <laughs> he, got a ride. He, he just calls the limo service. I, uh, no, he's, no, I, he's got, a, I, he's got a nice car in the parking lot. He's, he's doing well for himself. Oh, I know he got the G wagon. I, um, something that that's interesting. I'm going to go uh, to you, uh, Nevada on this one. Talk a little bit about prospective bounce backs with the transfer portal. Some of these kids, you know, and I look right squarely at Texas A&M as a preseason top five team, loaded class, the highest rated class of all time. Absolute disaster of a season. One of the worst, you know, flops in, in recent college football history. And I can imagine 20, 30 of those kids hitting the portal from that roster, maybe more like, what do you think the bounce back effect will be on some of these kids that maybe take the money or maybe even more so there's kids that were promised money you know, for, at all schools and, and the money might've fallen through or something might've changed or they never got paid. Uh, what talk a little bit about that. Cause I think that there's going to be like a second round of recruiting after these kids true freshman years when things don't quite go as planned. Uh, speak to that a little bit, Nevada. Well, I think we have what we have to remember is think of college football now as the NFL, where everybody's a, a free agent at all times and can move on to another, to, to another team. I mean, you've got instantaneous free agency. That, you know, there's no such thing as a long-term deal. And you know, I think what you're saying is absolutely right. You're going to have kids bouncing around, you know, multiple, multiple times. It's it's definitely changed the way recruiting's done. You, you know, recruiting never stops now. Recruiting evaluation never stops. I think it makes the job for, for guys like Mark Pantone and other guys that are on the uh, evaluation and recruiting side that much more difficult because you're not just recruiting them when they're high school sophomores and juniors and seniors and bringing them in. Like, you've got to be evaluating the portal all time. You've got to be evaluating other rosters at all time. I mean, look, but Jordan Addison leaves Pitt as a Blitnikoff winner and to go to USC, then you know it's on. And so uh, I think, you know, what you're saying is absolutely correct. You throw in some coaching changes, you throw in some, you know, NIL missteps or people not getting what they were promised. And I mean, heck, rosters are going to turn over 10, 15, 20, 25 percent every single year. And it's never been like that before. And, you know, for I'm sure Ohio State will you know, will stay on it. As Banks said, you know, Ohio State's NIL is good. You put the low rank. I think what the average guy in Ohio State, what makes like a hundred grand or something like that. So the, these kids are doing really well. It's not like the day when Barton played and uh, you're in the, uh, the two, the two cheeseburger special at, at, uh, at McDonald's with, uh, oh, with God. Your, your money. I'm sure you're seeing the money now. And you're kind of going, man, I was born, uh, I was born too early. That's for sure. But my uh, kid, my yeah, kid no. wasn't, my kid wasn't though. <laughs> no, you can't write. exactly. You got another bite at the apple, man. But uh, that's right, baby. It's, no, it's 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 definitely a, a it's a different ball game right now, and uh, recruiting never stops. It just it's uh, twenty four hours a day, seven days a week, three sixty five. Recruiting never stops. Bank, I want your your take on that. You know, do you you foresee a bunch of bounce backs as the coaching carousel spins? Because again, the beauty of the coaching carousel is some of the biggest moves haven't even probably been made yet. You know, like the Brian Kelly to LSU, the Shockers, you know, the guys that jumped to the NFL. You know, at this point, like Lincoln Riley to USC, it just happened after Bedlam. Uh, how do you see the transfer portal playing out this year after the first main year of NIL being done? Yeah, the coaches I've talked to at different programs, their eyes are all firmly looking at AM. That's They're not even... 
not even really that that's that's going to be the test case for nil do those kids still want to stay and play in a, a horrible culture right now but if you're getting paid well does that matter or are those kids going to get the money that they were supposed to get do those big boosters that made up their collective do they say we're not paying another nickel until jimbo gets fired and Jimbo's owed, a, you know, there's a lot going on there. And every coach in America is looking at, at AM right now just to see how that super class, do they cut some of them loose? Is there not enough money to meet everything that was promised? Or are those kids going to get all the money they were promised? And they're like, what do we care if we go three and nine or nine and three? What's the difference? We're making a fortune. I don't know. But that's the test case right now. I've had so many coaches mention to me that they are all watching AM. So that's going to be the fun one. Yeah, that's, I mean, with, with that buyout, I mean, I mean, he has the greatest nation of all time because his buyout is massive. There's no offset. Dude. So yeah, he can't go, he can't go be an analyst at Alabama and, and, de- you know, defray the cost. He's making the full boat and then go take another job and make the full boat there. If he'd want to, I don't know why I'd want to, but you know, like you see like his like Shamar Stewart or from right. Miami, right. Probably didn't even know where College Station was on a map until they sent him, you know, the first, you know, contract offer for an NIL deal. And then he's like, man, that place sounds great. College Station. That sounds like South Beach, kind of. You know, let's go there. Yeah. And then he goes there and Walter Nolan. I mean, they got absolute monsters in that oh, class. It is, and it's like, it's just. classes ever. Yeah. And it, it's like, if you saw, if you injected that into Ohio State, they, I mean, it'd be the favorites for the national title because you get those big athletic D linemen. You have like a Georgia type D line with those kind of guys. But when it goes off the rails, I've again, the, the greatest thing about my career at Ohio state as a player is I played on undefeated teams and I coached on a six and seven team in 2011. So I've, I've seen when the, the, the wheels fall off the wagon in the middle of the, you know, in the middle of the Oregon trail. And it's like, it is terrible. And I mean, guys, you know, and now that these guys have, you know, back then there was no transfer portal. Now these kids can pull the ripcord and be see ya, and they can go get money elsewhere. They could be, you know, I mean, because again, I just always feel like these guys, now that they're allowed to have agents, these guys have NFL agents now as 18 year olds. So there's a lot of back alley negotiating going on. Hey, you know, Shamar wants to come back to Miami. And again, I'm just using him as an example. I don't know if any of that's true. He's a great but, example. He's a great yeah. one to use. Yeah. I mean, we, we You're watched him at, we watched him at camp. And I was like, that kid is 18 years old. I was like, are you, me and you stood there and we watched him do everything. Like he did his toe touch. I was like, yeah, he's the best kid I've ever seen at Ohio state camp. I think, you know, <laughs> it's like, so it's yeah, like, what uh, do you put, what? that's why a and that's why A&M forked over the money for him. Yeah. Walter Nolan, Brownlow Dinley. I mean, they got, oh, God. they got dudes. I mean, those yeah. are guys you win national championship with. Yeah. So it's going to, what, are, where are those guys going to be? in three months, four months, where are they going to be? Are they staying at A&M? Are they still being paid? Has the money been pulled? The boosters said, forget it. I don't know, but that's, that's what everybody's watching right now. Kirk, everybody's watching to see, and they're all trying to get in on those kids too. You know, it used to be the, no, the, no tamper. It's all tamper right now. They're tampering. So those kids are going to have plenty of places to go. Uh, I mean, they can tra- they can all transfer to Alabama or Georgia tomorrow. I mean, those guys want to take those guys in, in a millisecond to say, "Hey, we'll do a ball again. Let's get you right. Let's go win another national championship." Because yep. those guys, yep. again, like with Jimbo, because the hardest part about A and M is with Jimbo. I mean, basically his buyout it's become so toxic there that you're almost forced to just fire him and clean house and start from scratch and and kind of you know you're gonna lose a lot of these kids, but. If the longer Jimbo hangs on, the less certain you're going to be. And you keep cutting these kids yeah. checks, but like these kids are all, when, whenever Jimbo gets whacked, I mean, because it's just a matter of, of, of if or, or when not if, it's because I, I can't see how he comes back from a season like this where, you know, they're out there stinking it up, losing to like, you know, these, these, the bottom of the SEC schools with probably as talented of a roster as there is in the conference minus the quarterback position. But yeah, it's going to be, that's the thing that I can't wait to see with the transfer portal is, how many of these kids after one year, they either don't get their money or it's not what it's cracked up to be, or a coach takes off. You know, like if, if all these kids, you know, if Brandon Ennis would have enrolled at Oklahoma and then all of a sudden Lincoln Riley takes off and then, you know, how many of those guys are going to go to USC? How many of them are going to go somewhere else? Maybe, maybe guys go to the NFL. Like, you know, Brian Kelly 
who's your, you know, he's Brian. I call him, I'm gonna call him Brian the Bank Kelly because that guy will have 17 NFL offers because his agent is the master of oh, the Browns are trying to sign Brian Kelly to a hundred and fifty million dollar <laughs> deal and the Eagles and the Giants. And so he'll LSU will probably give him like a 50 year extension after this one year that he's had. And he can coach, right? I mean, oh you my understand God. That. He is a, he's a very unlikable person. He's a phony from what everybody's told me, but Brian Kelly can freaking coach. Oh my he's God, been out yeah. there with, he's been out there with 4.0 student choir boys that walk little old ladies across the street. Now <laughs> he's got dudes. I mean, yeah. freaking dudes. And there's more going to be coming. You know what I mean? Oh, and, yeah. and all I got to say about the LSU situation is, Les Miles won a national championship there. Yep. Ed Orgeron won a national championship there. Those guys are not looked at as above average coaches at all. Brian Kelly yeah. is an excellent coach. He's oh, going yeah. to have more dudes on his side as we get going. He's challenging for a playoff spot right now in his first year. Oh, Just yeah. give I him mean, time. Just give him time, you know. And then if Nick retires in the next year or so, oh, I'm telling God. you, look out for LSU. When, oh. when he gets Odell Beckham on his side, and, and he gets Justin Jefferson on his side. Yeah. He can coach, man. Look out. Yeah, he goes, goes against a Joe Burrow. He goes against a yeah. big time quarterback. It's right. like, I mean, right. I'm telling you, I, I mean, I think he's, if he doesn't win coach of the year unanimously, I don't know who else could do it. Cause I mean, he, that guy turned that place around. That place was, it basically, it was Texas, what Texas AM was last year. Right. You know, oh, they, and were I mean, they were laugh. laughing at him after two or three weeks. I mean, they oh, were laughing God. at Kelly. And they ain't yeah. laughing now. No, he's he's formidable. Nevada, what what's your take on on LSU, uh, Brian Kelly, and just the overall importance of of making the correct home run hire in coaching? Because again, like you know, you've you've talked ad nauseum about the importance of hiring Urban Meyer in 2012, and how that basically saved us from you know being under the ocean for however long. So when you miss on these coaching hires. You know, you set the, the program back dramatically. You got to pay a buyout generally because it doesn't work out. Talk a little bit about, you know, making the correct hire. And if you were the powers that be, if you were the board of regents at Texas A&M, would you buy out Jimbo Fisher? Well, they're going to. They're going to buy him out. And Urban Meyer is going to be the next head coach at Texas A&M. I'm calling it right now. I mean, I, I mean, that job's tailor-made for him. Gives Give him another shot. Gives him another shot. That you know, Texas is kind of suits – you know, Meyer's sensibilities. It gives him a chance to compete with uh, with Nick Saban. And uh, no, I, I I think that's I think that's the move. I think that's going to happen. I think that's the, I think this thing is logical. I think he's the type of coach that can keep that that class together and keep a lot of those recruits in the program. And uh, I think that's the kind of splash hire that Texas A&M wants to make. But you know, as for coaching, I mean, look at the, we talked about the job that that Kelly's done at LSU. Look at the job that Brett. Bielema has done it uh, at Illinois. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, that that program was in the crapper. And, like, he's not a likable guy. His wife is Oh, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. He's a great dude. He is a great dude. I'm telling you, his TV personality is probably not likable, but his his real-life personality, he's a great dude. I had to throw I, that I, in there. I, I've actually met him before, and I didn't find him particularly right. likable. But, uh, like, I, I, I didn't. He's, yeah, I mean, he's my dude. I, he's my dude. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 people bag on, on him. I understand why they bag on him. But oh, I do can, too. I do too. He can, he can coach, man. That guy can coach. Like he's got Illinois. We talk about coach of the year. Like to me, Illinois. Oh, easily. I, yeah. The job that, that he's done there and the way he's turned that program around. He's got those guys playing. Um, you know, it, it's not because all of a sudden they got super talented and they got Juice Williams back or whatever it is. They're just they're playing hard. They play tough, and you know they're a good team. And look, coaching matters at the college level. I, I've I'll, I've often said it's almost determinative of success. I think great coaches could coach anywhere. Nick Saban could coach anywhere, and he has coached everywhere, and he's won yeah. everywhere. And yeah. you know, I think Urban Meyer's the same way. He's coached everywhere. He can win. He, he takes Utah to an undefeated season. He takes Florida to two national championships. He takes Ohio State from from Barton six and seven to you know, undefeated <laughs> season. You know what I'm saying? So like, I mean, great coaches can coach. And like I said, the you know Brian Kelly, you don't want to have your kid as a GA up in the uh, the cherry picker <laughs> with them or whatever it is. But in terms of 
in terms of playing, like I don't want to play LSU in the playoff. I, no. I've seen them play. I don't want to play those guys. Those guys are really good. They're really good. And that quarterback, with he's got them going, man. I'm telling you what, they're a heck of a team. So if they make the playoff, they're going to be trouble for anybody who plays them. I'm telling you that right now. Yeah, Perkins is good, man. I, I really want to see. I really want to see this LSU Georgia game. I mean, it won't shock me if Georgia just squashes them like a bug. But I'm telling you, the longer that game goes on, and the longer that game stays close, Brian Kelly against Kirby Smart in a fourth quarter chess match. I'm telling you, don't you know, Brian Kelly can freaking coach. He's just always been out there with a squirt pistol going against. Nick with nuclear bombs. He just, he's got dudes now. He doesn't have as many as he needs yet, but he can coach. And I'm telling you, he may get killed by Georgia. But if that game is close at the half and stays close into the third quarter, as we get to the fourth quarter, he can out coach Kirby Smart. I'm telling you, he can. Yeah, he's he's done a remarkable job of winning that locker room. I'm telling you, like, I, I've been I'm very impressed by Brian Kelly because he, he, you no, know, no, hold, at, hold on, hold on, hold on, though. How about his fake Southern accent, though? Come on. Oh, he's, it was a lot. Oh, like it, was a, it, was a, it was amazing. I love it. <laughs> that was, was that the greatest thing ever, the fake Southern no, accent? Oh, I, I, I loved oh, it. Uh, uh, so he, awesome. He's fake. He's as fake as a $4 bill, but I'm, <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> he's unlikable, and he's a fake, and he's a lot of things, but he is a <laughs> great football coach. He's oh, a yeah. I agree with y'all. I agree with y'all there, Bill. Oh, four dollar yep. bill. I, <laughs> I, I, like I said, I, I, you know, I think he's he's pompous, he's crazy, but God, oh, he's, he's a great. He's a, he's a he's a great coach. But again, like I worked for Urban, and he doesn't exactly have like the greatest bedside manner. Like he's you know, <laughs> I mean, he's like he's not exactly. And, and I love Urban Meyer, but it's like when you're working for him. It was funny when I talked to a couple coaches before Urban got there. He got there in December, and I found out I was being retained, and I texted some guys that had worked for him, and all they said is, buckle the fuck up. And I was like, oh, God. And then, man, when he came in, I was like, oh, my God. It was like, it was hell on wheels. And again, like, but again, when you lose seven losses and you got to change the culture, I didn't care. I was like, you can do whatever you want. I mean, we, I'll, I'll work 40 hours a day. I'll find, you know, if we got 24, I'll make it into 40 somehow, and just... We got to get it right, you know, and, and Brian Kelly got it right at LSU. So I give these guys credit when when these kids, you know, because there's a lot of sourpuss kids at LSU last year. A lot of kids wanted to transfer yeah. out. A lot of kids liked Coach Ogeron because they, re, you know, recruited him. And, yeah, so he's got to come win that locker room over, keep kids from transferring, you know, and then they start the season off and they clunk it up versus Florida State. And then, you know, he somehow he rates the ship, you know, which, and it's hard. Like, you lose that early season game. The kids are looking at you like this guy's an idiot. He doesn't know what he's doing. Right. And then, I mean, that's I give him a lot of credit. Remember that they got killed by Tennessee. Oh yeah, oh, and that yeah. game was them. And people were just laughing at Brian Kelly. What a horrible hire! You know, will yeah. he survive the year? Will LSU buy him up? You know, come on, come on. Hey, Lincoln yeah. Riley. Look at the job Lincoln Riley's done. <sighs> Unbelievable. That's yeah. again, you're meshing transfers and kids that might have liked the other coach, although I don't see how they could have liked Helton. But you know, yeah. I mean, that's an all star team, and he has meshed them. I think they're really good. I, I like USC. I don't, oh, don't want to see Caleb, those guys. That, that, Are you kidding me? That, that Caleb Williams is outstanding, oh. man. Oh, oh. He, is, he is he is so good. He is so good. And, I, I'm, I, I mean, he runs the, the, the zone read stuff. And he's got a cannon for arm. He can throw on the run, and uh, I mean, and he runs like a deer. I mean, that that kid is legit. Yeah, there, he is. He's a great quarterback. And see, see, he's the he's on he's the same as Brian Kelly. You know, the guy can coach, man, and he's going to get dudes at USC that he couldn't get defensively at Oklahoma. He's going to get them guys at Southern Cal. They're going to keep them guys home. Oh, and yeah. He can coach again. You know, that's a program you should be. You should be great. Your team should be great at mm -hmm. USC. You couldn't be great with Clay Helton. You can be great with Lincoln Riley. Oh God, yeah. You just go go recruit all the guys from Bosco to Matter Day. They play for the California State Championship. Shout out Big Dave and, and Mateo because they're going to be at that game, and that's their. You know, Bosco's got a revenge factor against Matter Day. They got them the first time, but you look at the who those put out. They put out Bryce Young and just oh, superstars across the board. Like so. 
if I'm if I'm Lincoln, I have my whole staff at that game, and I'm just like, yeah. you yeah. know, come on in, Mateo. Like, come on, you can start right away. You know, get some of those Polynesian kids in there. Like when, because when I played, it's funny because when I played, USC was Alabama. They were the the ones you didn't want to see at the end. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, yeah. they get Los Angeles. Plus, like it's LA. So what kid from across the country, like Fred Davis and these random kids, like, uh, uh, you know, Bill, Bill Green's favorite guy of all time, Dre Walker, who weighed 480 pounds played. He went from, went from Glenville to SC. I'll, I'll never forget. I was like, Dre Walker's going to USC. Are you crazy? Wait, I remember sitting in there. Wait a oh minute. my God. Wait a minute. Huh. The greatest story ever was told to me. And I believe it. He overslept for a Miami Dolphin one o'clock game. No. Oh my. Yes. Was he, was yes. he on, active, on, on the active yeah. roster? Yes. Yes, he overslept. He, he missed the game. He showed up at halftime. They told him to go home. Yeah. Oh, my. Top oh, that my one. God. That one, storyteller. storyteller oh. Top that one. Oh, he's probably making, I mean, you know, if he's on active, he's probably making 75 grand a week. <laughs> So, you know, you think you could buy an alarm clock if you're making 75 grand a week. I mean, I was in the NFL and it's like, I used to get those checks. I was like, this is the greatest shit in the world. I can't, this is like heaven. Oh my God. I, I want to stay here forever. So it's like, you do everything you can to make sure you're on time. You're there. You're prompt. Yeah. Do your workouts on time. Make your weight. Not oh my. Me. Oh my God. That is unbelievable. I thought. I was from the home game. Oh God. That's, that's up there. Uh, wow. Yeah. Top so, that one, Stokely Taylor. Well, no, the only thing that would have made that better is if he was a part of that 2011 class, the greatest O-line class in the history of Ohio State football, Tommy Brown, Chris Carter, yep. Brian Bobeck, yep. Tony Underwood. Zero career starts, four offensive linemen. No, we had one. Tony Underwood made a start as a true freshman against Purdue but in last Purdue, year. Right? And he got a Didn't they pull oh. him off the field in the first quarter? I, I, I literally argued with Jim Bowman about who we should have for a starting lineup because J.B. Schuers couldn't play, and I was like, and I, I swear to Jesus, this happened. I said, we should play Corey Lindsley at guard and put Jack B. Hort at right tackle. And he's like, no, we're going to keep Corey on the bench and we're going to put Tony Underwood in at right tackle because he's played right tackle on the second. And I'm like, but like Corey was like, I thought Corey was a really good player. He's only a sophomore. He never started a game strong as an ox, you know? And then after two drives, we went to my lineup and we still ended up losing because we sucked that year. But it was just like, we left Corey Lindsley, the highest paid center in the NFL, on the bench for Tony Underwood. And I was like, you know, and I'm just a quality control coach. So I have no pull. I'm just like, you know, they asked my opinion. I was like, I think Jack and Corey are our two best guys. We're trying to get our best five. It's Norwell, Corey, Brewster, Mike Adams, and, and Lindsley. Because those guys, they all played in the NFL, and four of them got drafted. Yeah. Two of them were the highest paid <laughs> players in the history of their position at one point. So, you know, you look at the talent, and it's like, that's not a bad five, you know, for, for Ohio state, given how bad we were, but we played Tony Underwood, but no, Chris Carter, I'll never forget. Do you remember Chris Carter signing day? You probably don't, but I, I love I it. Do. Where, I do. Where, they had the incident at the school. Oh my God. And, and like when I just, when they described that, I was like, he was like the scout, the boys, the, the, the ROTC leader. And he told the girl that he could measure her. Measure like he had her to, for the dress. For he, he had, he, he had to hand measure her for her dress. So he got arrested for like molestation or something. And I'm like, that is the I dumbest. Remember. That was the dumbest thing ever. And then there was a snow day in Cleveland that day. So we didn't get his letter. And then we find out that he got arrested. And I was like, man, run as fast as you can from this kid. And we still signed him <laughs> because, you know, we, we can't turn anybody away at the end. But I was like, the only thing that would have made that class better is if we would have had Dre Walker in it. Oh, my God. That would have been like. Or, or if there would have been a great nickname for that class. Oh, wait, three-star heaven, there was. Oh, God. <laughs> but I don't even, like, but you know what? There's got to be, like, you guys got to have, like, a two-star or a one-star, man. You got to lower the scale. Because, like, oh. I was a three-star. It's like, what the fuck? I mean, you, I'm not the same as those guys. Like, oh, my God. I don't know. I, just, I remember I, I got the, the first day of practice, and I saw this guy. So I was like, none of these guys can play. Like, I, I mean, I'm not, and I'm not, I'm, I'm not, like, they're, like, having a bad day. I'm like, like, like I mean, these guys couldn't play at, at Youngstown State, I don't think. Like, I mean, I just... Yeah. I can tell after about five minutes with a guy if he's got a shot, and all these guys, I was like, there's just, you know, there's just no ability. I mean, it's like it's not that they don't know the plays, it's not that they're whatever. They just, they just literally can't play. And it's like, you know, when you can evaluate yeah, 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 these yeah, yeah, yeah. kids, good. Yeah, Kurt, how long did how long did it take Corey Lindsley to start at Ohio State? He didn't start till the fourth year at the program. 
Oh, is that right? Uh, he didn't start a single game because I, I remember I'll never forget this. So we we were going through the spring game in 2012 and, you know, we're kind of going through like, you know, how long are guys going to play? Because, you know, if you're a good player, you don't play in the spring game or you play like one drive and you, you know, like CJ Stroud ain't playing into the fourth quarter of a spring game. So, you know, we're like, well, Jack and Corey should probably play a drive, maybe two. And Mike Vrabel, who I love to death, literally said, Lizzie has even started a game and you guys are going to pull him after two drives. And I was like, he's having a great spring. He's really good. And, and we don't have another guy behind him. So it's like, you know, we don't need him to get hurt in an exhibition and these young guys got to play, but Vrabel like dogged us. It was great. <laughs> I was like, I don't care what you say. We're, he's playing two drives and he's done period. And so, but you know, like I, I thought Corey was really good. I, he's a guy that I never saw lose a rep of one-on-one -on -one pass rush. And that's a hard drill for offensive linemen, but he was so strong Guys would try to bull rush him, and he was, like, running into, like, a brick wall. And, I mean, and guys don't you – know, I see centers get bull rushed into infinity in the NFL. I saw guys in the NFL that were starters in the NFL that would win one out of 100 reps of one-on-one passers. They'd lose every rep, but then they go start on Sunday and play and be fine. But Corey never lost a rep. And then, you know, gets to the league, and you see what he is. I mean, I don't know. It, it, it was like I was in, like, the twilight zone, where I was like, why don't we play Corey? So what about hey, what about how great of a coach Mike Vrabel is? I mean, oh, did God. you know he would be if someday one of the greatest coaches in the NFL, which I think he is? I, you know, I I think when he was young, it was weird because Urban almost didn't retain him. Urban like you know had to like interview him he five had, times he had to prove and prove himself. Like he gave him a ten, like a temporary, <laughs> give me a month and show me what you can do. Yeah, and, 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 you know, and, like, I always liked Vrabes. Like, Vrabes, like, he used to always come back and work out with us in winter conditioning. Uh, it, one day, like, on a Friday, like, you know, Al Johnson had us playing dodgeball, like, for conditioning, and I hit Vrabel right in the head with a dodgeball. And, like, I don't have a good arm. I don't have an accurate arm, but the ball sailed on me. I hit him right in the head, and he was playing. I used to always call him Austin Powers because he – his chest hair looks like Austin Powers. Like, it's, like, unbelievable. Mm -hmm. And I used to call him Austin Powers. He'd get pissed at me. But, like, I, I loved Vrabes, and, like – when he got retained, I was happy because him and Luke walking around, it's like two Neanderthals just walking up and down the hallways. <laughs> like, you know, I see him coming at me and I'd always, you know, cause I was pretty jacked back then. And I was like, I, every time I see Luke, I say, I'm ready for you to shoot your double. Cause I'm going to stuff it. And he'd laugh at me because I outweighed him by probably 75 pounds at least. So that's probably the only way I'd have a chance against Luke. But I, 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 it didn't surprise me because Vrabel, you know, he's a guy that was a pro's pro. He does stuff the right way. He's a hard ass. You know, he doesn't take, you know, he doesn't, He's not impressed by anybody or anything, or you know, he's very Bel Belichickian, where it's like he, you know, yeah. it, it's it's not yeah, it's not about what you did or what you used to do. It's about what you're doing right now, what you did last game, last play. Um, he's a great players coach. He recognizes greatness. Like he, I mean, he's so complimentary, you know, in in post games and stuff, talking about how great Derrick Henry is because you know Derrick Henry is probably, in my opinion, should be the MVP of the NFL because. He, I've never seen a guy at running back who's so much a part of the damn offense because he takes 45 touches a game and he gets 180 right. yards and you know he's he's just uh he's just hell on wheels to tackle because you see these DBs man and they see Derrick Henry coming at him and it is like it's like literal it's like literal hell because that guy he's literally like trying to tackle like a like a like a like a tank or something because he just doesn't he doesn't go down. And he doesn't, he's, he's a great guy. He doesn't bitch about it. Like he, a lot of guys don't want 40 carries, but Henry does. He wants it. He wants to yeah. run guys over and kill guys. And he's not worried about, you know, sustaining himself. And he'll probably be the mayor of Nashville when he retires. I just yeah. don't see that yeah. roster. Is, I, th I, I look at that roster every year and I think it's a four or five win team and they go to the playoffs every year and they should be the easiest team to stop. They can't, they have no <laughs> weapons on the outside. They have no quarterback. Yeah. Uh, their defense isn't loaded with all pro guys, but they he yeah. they real and I always when, thought he was a yeller, screamer, fire up the troops kind of guy. We watched him on hard knocks when he was with the Texans. He's not. He's a cerebral Bill Belichick type coach. He's out coaching people. And I, I think he's tremendous. Yeah. Dude, when, when Vrabel was named head coach, I ran out and immediately placed an under bet on their season total on wins. Yeah. I thought he would be I thought he'd be <laughs> terrible. I thought he'd be terrible. I didn't think there was any chance in heck that he'd be a successful NFL coach. And so like talk about being wrong. Uh, like I was so I mean I literally placed I, and I'd never done that before. And they're like, we're now the announced the coach is Mike Vrabel. I'm like, I'm betting the under on the season total right there. Yeah. But no, no he, I get it. A, I mean you, he's you thought he was like he a hype man. 
you know, and yeah, he's not. Exactly. He's very cerebral. Right. He knows he out coaches people to win these games. He can't throw the foot. His team can't throw the football. How do they oh, win? Yeah. And they don't have a great deal. They don't have the 86 bear defense either. No, they don't. No. And and he gets he gets it out of his guys, man. Like he's right. you know, they, right. they, they they traded AJ Brown, who I thought was a great player. They got and they got First round pick, they got cheaper with Traylon Burks, who had a nice game last yeah. week. But, yeah. but Derek Derrick Henry is the, I mean, he is the straw that serves the drink for those guys, and he is a, he is a mofo to bring down. And yeah. I, I, I love, I love watching him run. I take him on every fantasy team I can get him on because yeah. I just, he just, you, you see these guys cower in fear. And honestly, I can't blame him. If I was a hundred and ninety five pound corner and I had to tackle that guy, it's like a lot of these guys like to make what they call a business decision <laughs> they, yeah. know, they, they catch yeah. a cramp or they try to go low and close their eyes and no but i but yeah you're right like when vrabel got that job like the texans defense that he, he ran was like 28th in the nfl so it wasn't like they were you know, usually see these coordinators that have the number one defense number two yeah. offense and they go get a head coaching job somewhere but i mean it wasn't like they were lighting the world on fire there but you know but I, but again he's he's meshed well i think it was kind of the perfect fit for him because you know, he's a defensive guy. He's got, you know, the ultimate defensive offense with Derrick Henry yeah. where you yeah. burn the clock up, you know, you got, <clears throat> you protect your defense. Uh, they're tough. You know, they've drafted well. I mean, it's funny. Nick Petit first playing fantastic. He's probably gonna make the all rookie team. Uh, you know, he hasn't, I think he's given up maybe one sack or no sack so far. So it's like, I mean, for a wow. starting right tackle, he started every game. I mean, him and Thayer both started this past weekend. So shout out to those guys. I mean, that's, to start as a rookie in the NFL is hard as can be to do. And those oh. guys are doing it and playing great. Yeah. Well, I apologize for taking us on a 20 minute Mike Vrabel trip here, but I don't know how it happened, but. Oh, I don't care. You know, people, people, he's, people, special, people. Man. he's special, special guy. And I'm glad he's a great coach. Cause he's, he's one of my favorites. Oh, he's, he's hilarious, man. I'm telling you like Vrabel's like coaching with Vrabel's cause he's kind of bipolar. Like he's weird. Cause he'll some days he'll be super cool with you. And then the next day he'll act like you don't even exist or he'll be. So I, I never knew what frames we were getting like on, on a given day. And it was just like, it was always funny. Cause I, I just like, cause I was always kind of treated him the same, like whatever, but you know, him and him and Luke were, they were treats to be around. Cause they used to dog yeah. Pantone. They'd call him the great Pantini and Pantone. Can you lick up these, uh, these envelopes? Cause we had to write all these letters every day for the guys before meetings. And they'd hand them over to Pant the great Pantini and he'd have to stuff the envelopes. But <laughs> It was fun. Like I, like I said, I, like the 2012 staff, as funny as it was, it was like I worked with Tom Herman, who became the head coach at Texas, Stan Drayton's head coach at Temple, Zach, you know, who's menace to sports. Uh, then I had Vrabel, Tex, or you know, with the Titans, uh, Fickle, you know, he could, you know, he wants to be the Ohio State head coach eventually. Kerry, you know, who wants to be the Cincinnati head coach. I mean, Everett went on to the NFL, went to a bunch of places. So it was a good staff. I mean, we had some guys. And then Shane Bowen, who is my defensive GA, is now the, the defensive coordinator for the Titans. So it was like, you know, me and Shane used to always joke to, to each other about, you know, jobs and stuff. And he actually has a good job. He's DC in the in the league. But I I love Shane. I was texting him after the game. I was happy for him when they beat they beat the Packers. Sorry, Nevada. But um, you know, they, they were they were getting on that plane and they didn't all they didn't all make it home, but Shane made it home, so that was good. Mm. <laughs> Nevada, uh, spinning back to the game, how do you see this game playing out? How do you see the Bucks opening up? Uh, we had some great questions on here. Uh, you know, we, oh, we yeah, had a guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do we have questions, Coach? You're the you're the moderator, man. Oh Let's God, go. we've got a, we got a lot. Okay, let, let's talk about some of these questions real quick because I keep spinning back to it. But I blame Banks. You want to talk about Rabes and Vrabel's hilarious to talk about. So you know, yeah, it's I don't like, know how I got off on that. We got we, we, we got it. We got to tell some Vrabel stories, man, because he's like again of all of the unlikely guys to be great Ohio State coaches. Like Vrabes, like comes out of nowhere. Like I mean. He gets the job because Fickle, you know, because Trestle gets fired, Fickle gets promoted, and there's one open spot on the thing, and he didn't really have time to interview anybody. It's like a month before the season or two months before the season starts and hire your best friend to be the the, the linebackers coach. You know, so, I mean, he kind of got into it to help his boy out, but it was crazy. I mean, I remember in the winter – he was running and we thought he was going to make a comeback in the league for the, for the, for the Patriots or the chiefs, like in the playoffs. Like, cause he was like, he was like tuning up and getting in shape. And I was like, is this dude about to go catch another ring? You know, at the end of the season, like national signing day is going to say, yeah, I'm going to go play in the super bowl now, but he's the kind of guy that could have done it. Um, 
Here's a great one. All right. Uh, AWC, that's my, that is my dude. Who has a bigger running back issue this Saturday, Ohio State or the team up north? I'm going to start with you, Nevada. Uh, clearly they do. I mean, I, I like all three of our guys. I mean, I, I'll, I'll, shoot, I'll, I'll put Xavier in there too. I think they're all, you know, Dallin can clearly play. Um, you know, Trey's just got to get out of his own head, but he can get it done. And they, they, I mean, he'll, he'll break one in the hell of everybody that's been dogging him will be cheering him by the end of the day. And man, Mayan is just a horror. So I, I, I like our running backs. I don't, I, I don't think we have nearly as big of problems as Michigan is. I, I think Michigan's got real problems. So I think Quorum's, I don't think he's, if he goes, he's going to be severely limited at this point in time. I don't even know if he's going to go. His stability test was not good today. And I think that that situation's degraded to the point where I think he's, he's doubtful to out. And Edwards, you know, by all accounts, he's got a broken hand. And I'll, you know, I'll, I'll play against the running back with the broken hand because when you go beyond that, They've got absolutely nothing. So I, I think Michigan's definitely got severe issues for a team that wants to run the ball. They've got the bigger issues at the, at the running back position. I think it's a clear advantage to Ohio State. What about you, Bank? You on the same, same boat with Nevada on that? Oh, yeah, yeah. Michigan, really, um, they've got a problem. I, I don't think Blake Corum is going to play. I think it would be foolish for him to play. And I think you, you talked about business decisions before. I think he's hurt. And I don't think he's going to play. If he does, man, I mean, I think he's risking a lot by playing. Um, but then, like I say, at Ohio State, I mean, they plugged in Dallin Hayden last week. And, I mean, what, what more could you want? I mean, that guy, he made his bones last week. If Dallin Hayden plays poorly last week and, and fumbles the ball, misses holes, they would have lost to Maryland. That was a losable game. And I thought Dallin Hayden saved their bacon last week. Um, so props to him. He made his bones. You know, at some point, the recruiting rankings don't matter. You know, what you did against Rutgers in the fourth quarter of a 61-3 to game doesn't really matter. That game was important. And that was a losable football game for Ohio State. And, you know, that kid stepped up. He didn't have a lot of pressure carries. He's had a lot of no-stress carries all year. And there's difference, Kirk, as you know. It's a lot different blocking somebody <laughs> against Rutgers when it's 81 to two oh, than God. blocking somebody at Penn state on the road in a tie game. You know what I mean? There's a huge difference. Dallin Hayden, man. I mean, I was so impressed with that kid. Um, so Ohio state's fine this week um, running back wise. And I think Michigan's in a lot of trouble running back wise. So yeah, I don't think that's really much, you know, I don't think there's much doubt there. Yeah. Um, who plays right guard on Saturday? It's got to be Enoch. Uh, there's no way John Clark could bump it, and it would have to be Enoch, I'd say. What do you think, Bank? Well, that's who they went to last week, you know, when Matt yeah. went out. Um, yeah, boy, you hate to see that. Matt Jones, man, he, he's a heck of a football player. Yeah. I mean, he has come so far from where he was when they first put him on the field. Um you hate to not have him, but it's part of football. It's, it's the way it goes. Next man up and, you know, away you go. I think it will be Enoch Mamahi. And, um, you know, he gets all week to prepare with the ones. And, you know, let's hope he plays well. You agree with that, Nevada? Well, I'm, I'm, uh, I think it's. I think Matt's going to play. And I wouldn't count out Josh Fryer being in there. Josh Fryer, you know, was terrific when he stepped in for Dewan at tackle. He can play guard. And I know they like what he what he can give. He can move. He's big. He's strong. He's smart. So um, you know, I, I I you know again, I'm a big Enoch fan. But I you know, my, my I, I think Matt's going to play. I think Matt's going to go on Saturday. I think it's all hands on deck on Saturday, and I think Matt goes. Bill, did you ever see Chris Spielman play at Maslin? I saw him play our Perry team the oh, first God. game of the year. It was at Maslin. He ran a punt back. He ran over about three guys, and I thought he was going to kill somebody. Um, he's a, he was a bad dude, and he annihilated our Perry team, Kirk. I mean, it was it was bad. I mean, he ran <laughs> and he ran the ball. I mean, it was unbelievable. Um, just a great great player. Not as good as Andy Katzmore, second best linebacker I've ever seen in Ohio. Chris Spielman um, is a high school player. You, you see him run a punt back with that head of steam. A lot of people made business decisions that day, and the ones that didn't, got <laughs> not, the ones that didn't get trampled. I mean, trampled. Yes, I re, I saw him. I saw him play probably two or three times, but the one against our high school team was man, that was brutal. 
I was waiting for someone to ask if you were there when Paul Brown was coaching Maslin. Did not see any of that. Just missed. <laughs> Just, Just missed. Uh, Nevada is 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 Spielman the best high school defensive player you've ever seen, or is it Katzenmore? Yeah. It's got to be Katzenmore. I mean, Katzenmore was just different. Katzenmore was scary. Katzenmore, I, I saw Katzenmore play twice, and both times I was te- severely terrified for the other team because I really thought that he was legitimately going to kill somebody. I mean, I mean, he would hit guys, and they would just disappear. And I'd never seen that before. I've never seen – I've seen knockdown tacos. I've seen drag down tacos. But I've never seen guys just make some guys disappear. And he would make guys disappear – and uh, it was it was terrifying. And when he came, I think you know, we were all robbed. But seeing him in the NFL by that neck injury, because uh, boy, what a what a freak of nature and and uh, what a joy to watch. He was fun to watch at uh, Ohio State, but he was he was downright terrifying in high school. Is is he your biggest what if? And I'll start with you, Bank. Is, is Cat Moyer, You know, he got hurt on a fluke play. He, he he described it. I interviewed him. It was great. He said, you know, it was like a Friday walkthrough. And they did like onside kick drill, no pads on, and some like rookie undrafted guy. He goes to recover the ball, and the guy dives, hits him in the neck, and it, it causes this chronic like stinger that never went away. And he was forced to retire. Is either like risk paralysis or retire. But you know, he gave a big speech about you know Bill Belichick was going to like build the defense around him because you know Bill Belichick got there and. 2000 and you know andy was like a you know been in the league for you know a year or two and you know he looked at his traits and he's like you know i've worked with lt and some of these guys and he didn't say his lt but like you know when he has these feature these young feature you know super athletic players like he knows how to use them and utilize them and he was going to build a defense around andy i know according to andy this is andy's story but i mean is he your biggest what if bank oh man he i saw him playing high school again against our Perry team. And back then I wasn't in the media and um, I had a crew, like we would go to high school games. We love going to high school games, be great players. And I told my crew, my guys, my Stark County guys, I'm like this big soft ass guy from mid Ohio. (laughs) Because back then Columbus football was not very good. Like it is now. It's amazing right now. It wasn't back then. And I said, "Ah, he's going to come up and play Perry, man. Perry's got all these big, tough, hard nosed kids, you know, they'll grind that yeah. big dude up and run him yeah, after about five plays. It was like, <laughs> this is the greatest player I've ever seen. He stood in the middle of the field. If you ran wide, he got you. If you ran up the middle, he killed you. If you threw the ball, he was in coverage to knock it away or pick it off. And yeah, he was, he's the best, the best linebacker I've ever seen in Ohio, you know, and I worked for scout and worked for 24 seven. I've been out on these, ball fields all over Ohio for 20 years, you know, but Andy was the best linebacker I've ever seen. I mean, probably the best defensive player I've ever seen um, with Orlando Pace, the best lineman, uh, Maurice Claret, the best running back, uh, Charles Woodson, the greatest all around player I've ever seen, but Andy, the probably the best defensive player I've ever seen. Uh, what about you, Nevada? Give me your, give me a couple of your guys that have stood out over the years. Well, I'll just go with my, my greatest regrets, man. My, I'm, I'm going to go to my old favorite, Torrance Gibson. I wish that we could have seen Torrance Gibson play a little bit more because, boy, you know, it's like the you, – you just – if you want just some fun, go back and watch his high school highlights and just watch him play. He's playing at the highest level of Florida football, which, you know, at the time yeah, – I mean, Florida football is still obviously you know, absolutely fantastic, but – you know, back then it was it was cranking, and he was playing at the highest level, and he would just glide all over the field past guys. And the fact that we didn't get a chance to see him fully at Ohio State, you know, in a, in a, in a fully integrated system where he's at, you know, with with Heartline coaching him at wide receiver, with a with a first rate quarterback thrown to him, I still think he could have been, you know, the next Randy Moss. And that uh, that always makes me sad that we didn't uh, we didn't get to see more. We, we we had that one little spring game where I think he got two touchdown passes and. And, uh, and that's it. But that, that still makes me sad. Yeah, he was, I, I had guys in the Woody Hayes tell me he's the biggest freak to ever play at Ohio State. And this is like guys that have been around like Joey Galloway. And I'm like, I'm like, that's pretty gaudy. Like, I mean, like, the, you know, I mean, come on. Like, you know, we, we've had some, some freaky dudes come out of Ohio State, Galloway, Orlando. And they said that about Torrance. And, I, and, th- and these aren't guys that it's the first football player they've ever seen in their life. And they're, you know, it's not like it's, 
you know, they went to their first, you know, rivals All American camp. It's like, wow, these are the greatest players ever. It's like, no, well, you should have been here when Clowney was here. You should have been here when no, these guys were they're not impressed much. And they said that at all turns. So I was like, so that opened my eyes. Cause sometimes like when people say stuff, I always evaluate the comment and who's saying it and how long have they been around and who have they been around and so it really raised some eyebrows to me. And then, you know, when what happened to him was a tragedy where he basically got, you know, a, a girl said so that he did something, he didn't do it. And he was off to never, never land and never heard from again, which is sad, but it's part of the gig. Um, Bank. The, all right. We're getting the Tim Walton questions. Now. I was waiting on these. Bank, your assessment of Tim Walton so far this year. Uh, I, I think it's been easily the weakest spot of our entire uh, team, but you know, give me your assessment on Tim Walton uh, thus far. Are you surprised by how much our, our corners have struggled? Because we've got some talented guys, but man, they just haven't been good. And, you know, yeah. I, of all the teams that I'm scared of, not scared, but Styles make fights, you know, USC and their quarterback and throwing game is something I'm not really dying to see against our cornerbacks, but I love your take on that. Yeah, I, I, I'm really surprised because I th there's, why would you not think that, Denzel Burke would be better this year. He should no. be, right? By all no. intents. You threw him out there as a true freshman last year. It's pretty good. Kind of tailed off at the end. But you thought spring ball and Timmy Walton, you know, NFL guy coming in. And well, he'll be better for sure. And then why would you not think Cam Brown would be tremendously better this year than he was last year? You know, you'd think that. And then the young guys, you would think, well, Hancock. J.K. Johnson, those guys are definitely going to blossom this year, and it's going to be lockdown city, and it's not. It's not. They're they're just – none of those guys are better than they were last year, and I don't know why. It doesn't make sense. I mean, there's no way that Tim Walton is not a better tech technician than Kerry Combs and Matt Barnes were last year. There's just no way. Perry Eliano, I think in terms of pure – technical coaching ability not take the recruiting out of it just mm -hmm. on-field coaching and development i would take tim walton and perry Eliano over matt barnes and kerry combs but we haven't we have not seen that this year now the yeah, safety's it's... been the safety's been great ransom and hickman mm -hmm. been amazing like no issue there at all but the corners, and they should be better and i don't know why they're not better yeah nevada do you agree with the assessment on walton i, I like i said i I don't know what's going on in that room. And you know, when I hear a guy like Jalen Ramsley openly say that Tim Moulton's the best cornerbacks coach he's ever had right. uh, right. from a technical standpoint, and that's the guy that's making $30 million a year to play corner in the NFL saying that it's not like you know, he, when he was with the Jaguars and, and he was a rookie and how, how good he was technically and how he made him into the player that he, he became, you know, his work habits, his study habits, his technical stuff. Uh, that's pretty gaudy stuff. But so I was really stunned by how the guys have been playing Nevada, what's your take on on Tim Walton thus far? Boy, I, 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 he gets a big incomplete for me right now, just because uh, you know the, the, the players are so talented. But it, it's clearly the weakest spot on our defense right now, on a defense that's improved across the board. You know, you look at, about how good our defense is, and then you look at how bad our cornerbacks have been. So it really it's a tribute to how good our front seven is. But no, I mean, I, you know, I'm looking at guys that are that I'm you know Hancock to me is a surefire can't miss type of defensive back. And he looks a little lost back there. And, and at some point we talk about, you know, coaching's determinative of success. Well, if you're not getting it done, you know, I, I, like I said, I'm not, I'm not failing him. I'm not ready to jump off the fighter Tim Walton train yet or whatever, but um, I'm, I'm giving him an incomplete for the season because we, uh, we need to see more data. I agree. I, um, I just thought of something over this week and I talked to one of the original Wiseman. This was great. And he told me a story about a recruit. So I'm going to throw this to you, Bank, when I finish this story. A receiver wanted to come here really badly. He was brought here on a visit by a former Ohio State player, former receiver. Loved it. It was his dream school. Uh, kid was a big kid, lanky, kind of under, uh, you know, under mature, muscular. Not the fastest kid in the world. Loved Ohio State. Was his dream school. Um, got turned down by Bill Conley. He said he wasn't good enough to play here. Uh, the kid ended up being Larry Fitzgerald. Chris Carter wow. brought him here. Yeah. You know, I said, yeah. hey, he's I've known this kid forever. He's got great ball skills. He's raw. But he, you know, he was going to one of the military schools. But Chris Carter pounded the table for Larry Fitzgerald to come to Ohio State. And Bill Conley said 
he ain't good enough to be a Buckeye because we've got Chris Vance and whoever else. And I, but I was, I was just dying because I heard that story. It's like sometimes you hear these things, yeah. and you're just like, you look back and first ballot Hall of Famer, one of the best set of hands ever. Bank, do you have any stories like that off the top of your head where it's a guy that either youth recognized or maybe a high school coach said, hey, this guy's the guy. And then you, you, you just get like the, 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 the bluff back from, you know, Ohio State. You just say, hey, guys, you should take a look at this guy. And they say, eh, you know what you're talking about. You're dumb. And then he goes off somewhere and he just tears it up. Do you have a guy like that in your, in your repertoire? You probably have about 30 of them, but what's one that yeah, sticks out to you? I can tell you guys starting right now, middle linebacker at Ohio State. And the best is like Mark Pantone, who's the greatest, you know, like in his job, he's the the Babe Ruth or the Michael Jordan or whatever, whatever term you want to use. He's the best in the business at his job. He was one of the first to do this personnel director, whatever his title is now. I don't know. Everybody's got him now, but nobody's got one like him. And I was texting him about Tommy Eichenberg like long time, but in Ohio state didn't offer him till midway through his senior year. And every, and he's like, I know, I know, I know I'm pounding the table for him. I'm trying, I'm trying. I'm like, dude, he wants to be a Buckeye. He's the best, one of the best high school linebackers I've ever seen. He's right. Just, you know, he's not Katzenmoyer. He's not Spielman, but he's Kyle Berger who, and this is what Kyle Berger would have been if he wouldn't yeah. have ripped his knee up a couple of times. He's the same player as Kyle Berger. If you run wide, he gets you. You run up the middle, he gets you. If he blitzes, he sacks the quarterback. If he's in coverage, he knocks the ball away or he picks it off. And Pantone wanted him so bad. He wanted them, and they finally offered him. I mean, it was, you know, it was into his senior year when they offered him. He's committed to Boston College. But that's the one, you know. Like I say, I got 100 misses I could tell you about. I could tell you about Mike. I thought Mike Thomas couldn't play at Akron. I could tell you that story, too. But <laughs> – of the success story, Tommy Eichenberg, because he's playing right now. And I was the one, you know, just on the on the message board saying, you got to offer him, got to offer him, you got to offer him. And it was like, oh, you know more than the coaches, huh? Well, I don't normally, but on this one I do. <laughs> I know more than Billy Davis on this one. This guy can play. This guy is not just going to be a good player. He's going to be a star at the college level. You know, and then that one, you know, kind of got it right. Now, last year he was not very good, and I couldn't understand why he wasn't very good, but – Man, this is – what he is now is everything I thought Tommy Eichenberg would be and, and more, and more. He's better than I even thought he would be. But, you know, right. I had that one. You know, like my dad said before he passed away, even a broken clock is right twice a day. So. <laughs> Are you surprised that he didn't make – not the finalists. He didn't make the semi-finalist yeah, cut for the Buckus Award. Are you surprised by that? Yeah, and I mean – I, I think he could be nominated for, you know, defensive player of the year all overall, not just linebacker. I mean, yeah. I, I, yeah. I don't know. You know, I don't watch every team every week. So, I, you know, I, I watch Ohio State twice every week. I watch him live and I watch him on Sunday morning. I mean, I know how great that guy is. You know, oh, yeah. he's he is he's everything and more I thought he would be. Um, when I watch those games twice, certain guys like stick out every week to me. Like, Eichenberg sticks out on the first watch. Like, the guy that watches the Ohio State game drunk, you know, he knows Eichenberg's really good, okay? But the guy that – another guy sticks out to me week after week after week after week is Ronnie Hickman. Ronnie Hickman oh. is, is really freaking good. And, you know, I know he announced today that he's coming out early. It's the right decision. I think he's going to get drafted pretty high, and I think he is really going to be a heck of a pro. He is so smart. Things that you don't see when you watch it once, especially drunk, you're not going to see it. But even yeah. sober, you might not catch it. But when you watch it a second time, you kind of key in on this guy. He's better the second time. Every week when I watch the game, he doesn't really stick out the first time. The second time, it's like, that guy's a great player. He is a great football player. So not to go off on a tangent there, but Ronnie nah. Hickman's really – he's special. Yeah, like I think he's he's one of those guys you're not going to realize how good he is. So he's gotten then you see him starting in the NFL as a rookie next yeah. year and getting and six, inter six, so six interceptions. And you know, you're like, yes. wow, that guy is really good. And nobody was talking about how great, how much they loved Ronnie Hickman when he was on the team. Uh, Nevada, any guys that you, in your history, you're like, man, I think I love this guy. I saw his film. I've heard about him. And we just kind of drug our feet on him. Uh, for me, like Taylor Decker was one where – 
I literally got laughed at when I said, why don't we offer this guy? Cause he's six, eight. And we have, we had like the, you know, I literally called him like the, Oh God, what's the Willy Wonka guys? The, 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 uh, the little midgets, the little orange guys. I was like, that's what Oompa our line, the Oompa Loompas. I was like, we have the Oompa Loompas in our recruiting class right now. Cause we had like Brian Bobak and God bless. I love Jacoby Bourne to death, but he's like, he's like six feet tall. I was like, we got to get some guys that actually can like, you know, dunk a basketball at some point so we can play we have some tackles. And I got, I literally got laughed at. We watched this film and I was like, this guy's got Notre Dame. And, and I was like, we're not offering him. He's like, he's not going to come to camp. I was like, I don't care if he comes to camp. Now again, I'm a QC. So I have a quality control. So I have no pull. But then, you know, as soon as Urban shows up, we offer, you know, and Ed, Ed comes with, with Tim Hinton and, you know, we, we flipped him. But I was just like, why on earth would we not offer that kid? It was hilarious. But does anybody stand out to you, Nevada, um, in terms of guys that, you know, maybe you were higher on than the, the local populace or the recruiting rankings and they turned out to be really, really good players? Well, my one was Michael Thomas. I mean, Michael Thomas, I was all in. I one of my best sources had, had, had told me about him, was talking about him. And I'm just going on and on and on and on about what a great player. And I went all in on Michael Thomas. And then he, he, he redshirts, not his freshman year, but he redshirts like his sophomore year. And I. Yeah, that was, that was brutal. Yeah. Yeah. He, he, uh, he fuzz. So I think TJ's in this check. Cause he said, we need more TJ Downings on the team. Unless Kirk Barton's ask Bill Green. I'm going to put that comment up on the screen. So obviously TJ's logged in the chat because I did, I can tell by your grammar that that's you, TJ. Look, yeah. he said need more TJ. Like when it's all in all undercase and there's no periods or whatever. Uh, yeah, he, TJ's he's sexy. He wants to do a pod. I was like, um, but Bank, I I uh, I love that. S someone brought up Matt Christopher. Um, oh, yeah. Some County Lake. Yep, yep. Yeah, Matt, Matt Christopher, was he a full ride guy to Ohio State? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. They had such high hopes for him. I think he got hurt, too, I think, and probably had to medically retire. If I'm trying to remember, great high school player. One of the top high school Star County linebackers ever. No doubt about it. He was a he was a Spielman type. He's not Chris, but he was that type. Yep. See, this is great. So, TJ on the screen, Kirk Barton, one and a half stars coming out of college because – that Where'd, that half, Where'd that half come from? It probably came from TJ trying to make sure you can try to get on the podcast. I'm it gonna block him. I know. <laughs> you used to ball your stars on Ty Hall and Matt Mazel. <laughs> the superstars of the class. Uh Nevada, are you are you back? I'm back. My my yeah. battery's dying, man. This e camp just eats my battery up like crazy right now. So it's we just gotta, eating it up and it we gotta get you this, it up. Thing, this thing called a phone charger. I know, amazing, I know. amazing invention. Look, I know. We, I know they don't have this in in Manhattan Beach, but I can. Send we need a go a go fund, a go fund me for my <laughs> charger. It's like, jeez. Go it's fill so my bad. battery up. Oh my gosh, this is so, so you, bad. You're, you're talking about Mike Thomas and no, I, I great... just took so I I took so much grief about Mike Thomas and just like and I was like, man, I can't because I, I, I'd never seen anybody redshirt their sophomore year. That was like the weirdest oh, thing ever. And Did then he comes know. back. <laughs> and, 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 yeah, yeah they, never, back they never red shirt Juco guys. That's how awful he was. Yeah. Oh, and, and, th and then he turns out to be one of the great NFL wide receivers of all time. And um, yeah, no, he was he was the one guy that because this my, my, the source that I got this from was, is just never wrong on players. And when he told me how good this kid was, I was like, "You sure?" He's like, "Yeah, he's really, really, really talented." And uh, that that was one of my that was one of my favorites. But before my battery runs out, I want to talk about the game. I want to get you guys on. Game predictions for the game on Saturday. I know we've got 207 people listening right now. I know people are uh, dying to hear what you guys think. I want, I want to lock you guys down for, on your Tuesday. I realize by Friday it can change. But as of Tuesday right now, what's your prediction for the Ohio State-Michigan game score on Saturday? Go Bill Green bank. first. <laughs> Well, I, I make my official prediction Friday morning. <laughs> but I, I just, you know, I, I'll say, you know, I, I've said, I said it earlier in the chat. I, th I just think Ohio State's the better team. I think they're a national type team. I think Michigan is Big Ten good. And I think there's a difference there. And I think there's a huge difference in quarterback. Um, and then when you throw in the intangibles of home crowd, um, 
had it kicked in your face for 364 days. Yeah, I, I think Ohio State should win, and they should win easily. But I'll have my official, you know, thousand-word report with the official score prediction on Friday morning on the site. Love it. But I get a little preview there. I mean, there's no way I'm picking Michigan to win, and I doubt if I'll pick them to cover. I, I think I think Ohio State can – if Ohio State plays their best and Michigan plays their best, Ohio State will win easily. Ohio State has to be off their game for Michigan to stay in it or possibly win. And I expect Ohio State to be at their best. Do you want me to go yeah, to Nevada I'm, while you, while your battery is still functioning, or do you want me to go? No, no, you go, you go ahead. You, you, you go ahead. You, you want to bring it home? I just want to make sure if you're at two percent, then we don't lose you again. Yeah. You know, well, that's right. Maybe, maybe I should maybe, maybe I should go before. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm with I'm with Bill on that. I, I think, uh, I, and and I'm going to say it right now. I think Ohio State plays their best game of the year. I think they. I think this is like a Clemson playoff type of performance. The good Clemson game, not the bad Clemson games. But the uh, I think this is one of those games where we come out and we kind of go, wow, that's the Ohio State team we've been waiting to see all year long. Where they hit on all three factors, they hit on special teams, they hit on offense, they hit on defense. I think we make Michigan one dimensional, um, and I I think it's going to be a really long day for Michigan. And I you know I I think something like. 35 17 35 14 or something like that i think it's going to be one of those types of games where ohio state lays it on them lays it on them good and i don't think it'll be close and i and i'm i'm laying i'm laying the uh the points and gladly i'm, I'm betting ohio state every which possible way in parlays and teasers and the money line the the spread and um they let me parlay to horse racing game I'll, I'll do that as well but it's uh i'm, I'm all in on ohio state this weekend well, man, I, I hope that if you win all that money, we get you a brand new spanking phone. It's got a sweet battery I'm, in it. Yeah, I'm th- no, I just need a, I need a charger. Then I got a great phone. I need a charger. I'll we'll get you a bag safe charger for Christmas. I uh, I think we're gonna kick the shit out of them. I really do. Like, I, I mean, I, I've talked to guys on the team. These guys, they're cold blooded. They're killers. You know, some of these guys that I really trust and I really, you know, and again, like last year, I didn't feel that from the leaders. Last year, they walked into a fist fight. They got their asses kicked, you know, and, and last year they had Aiden Hutchinson. I thought was a really good player. He turned out to be a fantastic player. Number two pick in the draft. Probably should have been the number one pick in the draft because he's outperforming the kid from Georgia pretty handily, statistically. Um, emotional leader. Uh, you know, again, our guys, again, they're scoreboard watchers. They're kids. We beat Michigan State 56-7. to seven. Michigan State beat Michigan last year by some miracle of God. And you know, I thought our guys thought, they well, you know, they, we beat them by 50. They beat Michigan. We'll walk in there. You know, all we got to do is one by one. And they walked into an absolute brawl. And then, you know, you can't bring a, you know, you can't walk into a fist fight in that game, especially up there. I never took it for granted going up there just because it's so hard to do. But like, you know, then you got the the after the game, you know, and, and Bill Green, the prophet, you know, he he gets inside the Michigan program. He posts on BuckeyeScoop.com. One of the most pro- prophetic statements I've ever read in my life. It was almost like he had great sports almanac. He says, you know, the, the guy said, you know, they think they're seven on seven team. Think they're soft. Think they're a bunch of pussies. They're not going to want to get hit in the mouth. It's going to be cold. It's going to be a little rainy. It's going to be snowy. It's going to be our senior day. It's going to be a, a towering inferno. And the seven on seven team from Columbus that blows everybody out because nobody wants to hit them in the mouth isn't going to be ready for it. And you wrote that. And I was like, wow, that's pretty bold. Well, I mean, that wasn't me. That wasn't my prediction. Well, no, no, I don't. I, no, no. You, you got yeah. that from somebody inside yes. Michigan's program. Yes. So yep. that, but, but I mean, really, that they had, they had probably a deep, have to re, I'll probably repost that again this week, not for this year, but for yeah. what was said last year. I mean, I'll, I'll repost that again this year and maybe I'll yeah, try so to get people some out there, people, people out there on YouTube, Bill Green says Ohio state's a seven on seven team. That's the thing. That was, that's the quote <laughs> for the thing. Yeah. It was last year. Well, I didn't yeah, argue I with love- the guy. Hey, he was right. He, <laughs> no, he, 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 he was, was right. Seven on, he was no. a seven on seven team that didn't want to get hit. I mean, he he had them pegged. I mean, they, that's who they were. Uh, yeah, they but weren't I mean, physical they, enough. They weren't physical enough to stand up to Oregon. And what more do you no. need to say? That's all, that, that's all. That's all you need to say. And Oregon, Oregon didn't have Kayvon Thibodeau, who's the best end in the right. country last year. They didn't have Justin yeah. Flo, who's their best linebacker. They had to right. fly from Oregon all the way to Columbus and play in a noon football game. So that every possible, yeah, 
every possible attribute that could have favored Ohio State, favored Ohio State. And we got we got dog walked by Oregon. Yeah, like they had to fly six hours in a little plane and get off and, and play a noon game, which is you know that's eight a.m. body time, and they just beat our ass. I mean, that was as perplexing. Just, like like when I saw that Kayvon Thibodeau wasn't playing, I was like, if I was those tackles man, I'd have been celebrating the locker room. Like God, we have to play the top top five D end and you know, whoever they're putting out there ain't as good as that guy. So, but no, we I thought we had everything squared away, and, and we just got dog walked you know it was it was bad and then you know to get back to the, the michigan prediction it's like you know these guys you know like well jim harbaugh has the balls you know and he's been cooking that up in his little head for a while to say ryan day you know he's the guy's born on third base but thinks he hit the triple that's like that's a big you know that's a big like you know you ain't shit dude you took over urban's program you, you they left all the infrastructure in place you just waltz into there and you know so again like because you know there's a feeling around the coaching you know, spectrum that that's what Ryan Day is. And like, I don't think he's that because I think he's enhanced our offense. I think that our recruiting's, you know, gone up, but are we, you know, tough enough to beat Michigan? And I think that, uh, you know, everything that could have gone wrong for Ohio State last year went wrong. We had a slow start. You know, we just looked disinterested. It was cold, whatever. But like this year, I think that after you've been called soft for your, which being, if you're a football player, being called soft is the worst thing you could possibly be called. So, you know, like these guys, some of these guys are not, some of these guys, you know, these people that are out here calling some of these guys soft, they wouldn't want to see them in a dark alley. So you don't want to walk up on Cade Stover, Tommy Eichenberg, Paris Johnson, because they will whoop anybody's asses. Those guys are tough dudes, but it's like, they've had to live with that for a whole year. And I remember in 03, the only loss that I experienced when I didn't go to the game, so it didn't really count to me because I was a red shirt. I, I was watching it in the dorm. So that doesn't, if I'm not at the game, it doesn't really feel like a loss because you're not even like really part of the team. But like, I remember we played soft up there in 03 and that was Tim Anderson and Krenzel and all the guys that beat the, the Miami hurricanes. They went up there and Michigan beat their ass in Ann Arbor. And it was like, and I was like, man, I am not about to go through that shit. Cause like, you know, the olden days, it was like, if, if you played Michigan, you played the week before Thanksgiving. They used to always tell my mom, I'm like, look, if for some weird reason we lose to these guys, I am not coming home for Thanksgiving. And I'm probably not going to be home for Christmas. Cause I just don't feel like dealing with that shit. But like when I was, but when I was like, you know, so you always had that extra motivation where it's like, you don't want to walk around because it is a real thing. Like these guys were humiliated last year and everybody reminds them of it everywhere they go, man. And it's like, you know, and, and they have a chance to redeem it and flip it this year and be the heroes again and make everybody feel good about the program. So I think it's a lot of motivation. I think it's all in Ohio state. I think that the breaks are coming in and I think that Michigan's already kind of backpedaling in their press conference where they say, oh, well, there's room for respect and there's room for kindness. And I was like, dude, I don't respect you guys. I hated you guys. When I played those guys, I hated those guys. It wasn't some movie, you know, bullshit. Like I really hated those guys. And that's all TJ was. And there was we weren't out there, you know, dicking around, shaking hands with them after the game because I wasn't about being friends with those guys. So uh Nevada, you got anything to close this thing out? Um, I'm gonna actually get on with TJ here in a little bit. So we're gonna actually we're gonna have the, the after the after we're gonna have the, the night shift, the after hour screw, me and TJ. So yeah, no, I you know. no, I, th I, th I think you hit it right <laughs> in the head though. I mean, last year Ohio State didn't just get beat last year, they got humiliated. And yeah. when you when you get humiliated and you get your manhood questioned, and then the other team questions your manhood, and then your other oh, team's God. coach questions your coach's manhood, it's like I mean, it's on. It's on on Saturday. Oh, man. And I'm telling you, like I said, I am not a big proponent of that, that bulletin board stuff, but it's real, man. And I, like I said, I talk to the players. I talk to guys there. I know how personal it is. And so it's like anybody who's thinking that this is not personal and that this is not going to be spirited on Saturday is just they're not <laughs> understanding how bad this was. And uh, I think, you know, uh, there, there's a reason why Ohio State's been so tough at home. There's a reason why Michigan's been very, very mediocre on the road, and it all comes due on Saturday in Columbus. And I and I can't wait. I can't wait. It's gonna be a it's gonna be a, a fun time. It's gonna be a glorious time, and it's gonna shut up the Michigan people. All those stupid Michigan people that bring out that Wolverine stuff every twelve years whenever they get a win. Now they can put it back in mothballs and run scurry back to their corner, so we don't have to listen to them. Oh, we're we're so great. We've got the culture. No, you've got a coach with Asperger's syndrome or whatever the heck he's got. And uh, he can run off to the Colts or whatever team he's going to run off to after his one mighty victory against Ohio State. And I, I'm done with them. I'm done. I'm done putting them to bed. They're, we're going to bury him this Saturday, and it's all going to be over. 
Jack, you got any final thoughts after, <laughs> after that? After I, I mean, he just burned up the last two percent of his battery with that diatribe, that volume level. <laughs> I have nothing. I have nothing. nothing. I, I'm waiting I, for TJ. <laughs> I'm waiting, I'm waiting for TJ now. Oh God, TJ or <laughs> TJ's <laughs> part, T, TJ, you're probably gonna have to go bail TJ out of jail after this one because it's Bring gonna on, be TJ. T, TV TV MA on the thing. But I uh, this one, the, the, this the, one's what? Mike, Mike. The mic's been dropped on this one. It's a, we're done, man. <laughs> I, I what else it. you got to say? It's ended. Go uh, to TJ. All right. I appreciate you guys. As always, we're going to wrap this thing up. We have our crew is fantastic. What a crew with Bank and Nevada. Those guys are nuts. They're characters. Uh, if you enjoyed this, please leave us a like. Subscribe to our channel. We are really growing like crazy. We appreciate you guys. We have an absolute blast on our on our site it's like this every day on our site man we're always talking uh we have a great community eclectic really good people so love to have you guys as our as a uh, members of the scoop family uh feel free to join fantastic christmas gift black friday's coming up you guys gotta get your shopping done you got mom dad boyfriend husband whatever wife you know you want to give them a great gift get them here at blackguyscoop.com you guys won't regret it it's fantastic we're looking for those first time message work people, they've never been part of a community like this because it is fun. We have such a great crowd and uh, we are going to be going crazy during the Michigan game. Tons of inside info coming from inside the Woody Hayes. Uh, you guys are going to love it. So as always, we appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. Again, comment down below who needs to be the MVP. Give me a score. I want to see your score for the Ohio State Michigan game. I need your prediction. Uh, and also shout out where you're from. I love when you guys do that. Um, we got people from Florida. We've got people from all over the world, you know, Europe, Asia. Uh, it's fantastic when you guys do that. Appreciate you guys. So I hope you guys have a great rest of your night. This has been Buckeye Scoop Live. Thank you so much, Buckeye Nation. And thank you, Scoop family. I hope you guys have a great rest of your night. Talk to you guys tomorrow. And we will see you on the Ask the Insiders message board on BuckeyeScoop.com. You guys have a great night. Go Bucks. Be Michigan.